Spiders are pretty much everywhere. Over 50,000 species worldwide, a few are bound to end up in your house. And I bet there's a spider watching you right now while you watch this video. But don't worry, I'm a biologist. And today I'm gonna show you exactly which spiders you've got lurking in your house. With a little help from me. And what you can expect from each of them. Just about anywhere in the world you live, you're probably familiar with this image. A creepy, spindly creature with ghostly pale coloration lurking silently in a cobweb in a forgotten corner. Let me introduce you to the most iconic spider in your house, the cellar spider. These spiders originally evolved inside caves and other like dark, tucked away spaces. As a result, they quickly learned that human dwellings are a great place to hang out. This particular species is almost entirely associated with human settlements now, in a process that we call synanthropy. When you have creepy looking spiders like this that are living alongside people and encountering people a lot, you tend to get a lot of old wives' tales about how dangerous these guys are. It's been long said, the cellar spider, or the daddy long legs, is the deadliest spider on the planet, but has fangs too small to puncture human skin. Now, I know firsthand that you absolutely can be bitten by these spiders, and their venom is not that toxic. It's pretty much only toxic if you are an invertebrate. They tend to like to take down a lot of other spiders that are even more venomous than they are. And the common thought is, well, if this thing can take down a brown recluse or a black widow, it must have some pretty tough venom, but that's not entirely how it works. These guys have evolved to take down lots of other arthropod prey, so they're really, really toxic against other arthropods, like some of the more venomous spiders you can find. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's like a venom arms race where one spider is more toxic than the other just because it can kill the other spider. And it's not the only spider that's commonly found around people that have some crazy myths about it. My friend Travis is actually an amateur arachnologist from Canada, and he's done some pretty incredible work with hobo spiders and sack spiders. Yellow sack spiders are usually pretty easy to identify. The whole spider is usually sort of a yellow or straw color, with the abdomen usually being a little lighter than the rest. And they have these adorable little black toes, like they're wearing little boots. Now, it was believed for a long time that the venom of these spiders could cause necrotic lesions if they bit you. But that was based on one paper back in 1970 that looked at five cases of necrosis, and in none of those cases was a spider even seen biting. Yellow sack spiders were found in all the patient's houses, but they probably would have been found in every house in Boston at the time because they were super common spiders. More than 30 years later, scientists actually looked at known cases of verified yellow sack spider bites and no necrosis, it just wasn't there. So there have been some circumstantial evidence a long time ago that was enough to get a myth started, but thanks to further research, we know today that isn't true. Yellow sack spider bites usually only cause a little red bump and some itchiness and pain, but that's usually about it. So medically speaking, they're basically harmless. Now, as for in your house, these spiders don't really stay put, but they tend to stay up high, I've found. They make these little sleeping bags out of silk, usually where the wall meets the ceiling, and they're nocturnal, so they'll spend most of the day in there. But at night, they're active hunters, coming out to roam around the walls and ceilings and smelling around for prey. So you might see them out of their sacks and going for strolls just as you're getting ready for bed, which is unfortunate timing, I guess. But they're not interested in you. They'd rather avoid you and eat all the bugs that will try to bother you. So all in all, they're pretty chill spiders that really didn't deserve the reputation they had for a long time. And speaking of undeserved reputations, there's another spider that became even more notorious for its supposedly necrotic venom, even though it too was most likely wrongly accused. Hobo spiders can be a bit tricky to positively identify, but one of the first clues 
use will be what kind of web you find it in. Hobo spiders will make a funnel web that opens up into a sheet, and they'll spend most of their time in that funnel. Now these are a pretty plain brown spider, but the legs will be a dark brown with no banding. They'll have this sort of feathery pattern on either side of their prosoma, the head part where the legs attach. They've got eight eyes in two rows that are all about the same size, so that's how you know this isn't a wolf spider. Now the belief that hobo spiders cause necrotic wounds started in the late 80s, and while the CDC no longer considers them medically significant, that belief is still really pervasive among a lot of the public. Now it was based on some circumstantial evidence and one experiment done by one researcher over 30 five years ago, but despite repeating the experiments, nobody has been able to get these spiders to produce necrotic lesions, and we've never actually seen a case of a confirmed hobo spider bite leading to necrosis, even though researchers have tried really hard to find one. So while a bite from one of these will hurt, it's unlikely to begin with, as they're not really aggressive, and it's not really a medical concern at all. When they live in our houses, these freaky looking arachnids can get the jump on us when we least expect it. But all around our homes, spiders and other unusual little creatures are living out their lives in a secret world that most of us walk past every day. Due to how close we all live together, we're bound to cross paths with some of the secret world's denizens. And yes, there are definitely spiders who accidentally find their way into our houses without meaning to. Prime example are wolf spiders just like this. And of course, when you have a big flighty spider find its way into your house, that can freak a lot of people out. Especially when that big flighty spider is kind of drab and brown. It seems like every brown spider that winds up in your house is a brown recluse. But of course, this is as far from a brown recluse as you can get. These are big, active hunting spiders. And besides their size, you can usually tell a wolf spider because number one, they can't really climb anything where brown recluses tend to climb up on walls and stuff. And those big ol' eyes right in the front tell you it's a wolf spider. They do have big fangs, but they are really unlikely to actually bite you. So finding one of these guys in your house is surprising, startling, but not something you actually need to worry about. They probably wandered in your house looking for cover. These guys actually tend to turn up the most right after a rain. And that means either a door was left open or there's some kind of crack or crevice that little critters are using to get inside. These guys are proficient active hunters and they're really smart too. Those big eyes aren't just for show, they have really good vision. And they use that normally out in the woods to track down and intercept prey. I'm gonna release her back out in the environment so that she can go out and hunt insects in the place where she belongs and not get the jump on any of my family. All right, you, stay out of the house. Safer for you out here. Another really intelligent spider that does find its way in is the jumping spider. They're pretty hard to miss, and even among people who don't like spiders too much, a lot of people give jumping spiders a pass because, let's be honest, they're actually kind of cute. They're small, they're fuzzy, they got big ol' eyes and these cute little petty palp mustaches that they twiddle like they're thinking. And How they wandered in is because, with that intelligence, they're curious. They wander around and they investigate things, and they just see an open door as an opportunity opportunity to go discover a new part of their world. They're not there to bother you, they're not there to be mean or to creep you out. Worst case, they might jump on you from the ceiling and freak you out, but more than likely they're content to kind of just hunt the moths, flies, mosquitoes, and other bugs that wind up at your lights, and are almost like a bite-sized little cat that'll do pest control inside your house. If you do find them and you don't like them, just use a cup or something and escort them outside. They won't make too much of a fuss about it. While plenty of spiders that wander into your house really don't want to be there, there are also those who are a bit jealous of those synanthropic spiders we showed you earlier. Spiders will often find their way into your house through little openings in the envelope, like where pipes enter or exit, or doorways that don't quite seal perfectly. While they probably end up inside by accident a lot, some of them are pretty happy to stay inside. It's warm, there might be water, and houses are also places where insects often get constantly concentrated in certain places, like windows that aren't perfectly sealed, or storage rooms where there might be food sources. So some spiders can do really well inside a home, and also in the fall, a lot of them might come in just to escape the cold. And once they're there, if there's food, they'll stay. I would. 
So there's a wide variety of spiders that might do this. Giant house spiders, parson spiders, various wolf spiders, all kinds of spiders. And a few of them can be really weird. You'll know you're looking at a spitting spider if you see this weird bulbous cephalothorax and those long, really spindly, knobbly legs. They almost look translucent. If you get really close, you'll even see they have six eyes. So you can confuse them for brown recluses really easily, but don't worry, we're, we're gonna get to brown recluses later. This one is not dangerous. In fact, these guys are really special for two reasons. Number one, in their native habitats, they can actually be really key predators of recluse spiders. And the way they hunt other spiders is exceptionally impressive. These spiders get their name from their uncanny ability to actually shoot web at their targets, just like Spider-Man. And they do it with these modified fangs that are almost like squirt guns. They actually have extra web glands connected to their venom glands. So they can spray this venom-laced web out of their fangs that not just traps their prey, but immobilizes it. So the brown recluse, even though it's highly venomous, right? It has no chance against the spitting spider because the spitting spider has the range. And they are creepy looking, but I would say they're not the creepiest looking spider that might be in your house. What is it with all of the extra creepy spiders wanting to move in? Now, why can't we have the cute jumping spiders or pretty orb weavers? Why has it gotta be all these weird, creepy looking ones? The Southern House Spider is probably the closest look-alike to the brown recluse that you'll find in your house, if you're, especially if you're in the Southeast US. They have those tiny little eyes right in the front of their cephalothorax, long, knobbly, very obviously jointed legs. But what sets them apart is the way they move. They actually kind of walk along like a tarantula. That crazy tarantula-like movement is actually what makes these spiders so interesting. These house spiders are one of the most ancient groups of spiders in the world and are part of a family known as the crevice weavers, which is how you'll kind of find them. They'll be in these little tucked away cracks and crevices in your walls, and they'll create these kind of jagged networky webs that sort of spiral out from the hole they're actually living in. Fortunately, unlike the brown recluse, they're not considered to be medically significant and they rarely bite people. In fact, usually they wanna stay in the crevices that they weave their webs in, only coming out to look for mates or to attack prey. That being said, there is another group of spiders that are known as the house spiders that do have some dangerous members. These spiders are also known as the cobweb spiders and are actually a pretty massive family, but they all have a pretty similar body plan. Their huge round abdomens make up most of their body mass, and they have these really spindly, creepy legs. The vast majority of them are harmless and will basically just sit there in little tangly webs behind your toilet, minding their own business and not at all a threat to you. But you probably have heard of their most infamous and iconic members, the widow spiders. They have the same body plan, that really round abdomen, long spindly legs, and while their colors may vary from location to location, they all have one thing in common. On their underbelly, a bright hourglass mark. And these guys can mess you up. Their venom is a really potent neurotoxin that will send you into a world of full body pain and muscle spasms if you are bitten. So these spiders definitely demand some respect and distance. However, in most cases, they prefer to be left alone and won't bother you if you don't bother them. These guys will find themselves in their thick, strong, tangled web in dark, dry spaces, like the cabinet under your sink or in forgotten corners of your closet, attic, cellar, places like that. The best rule of thumb if you live in an area where widow spiders can be found is just double check before you stick your fingers anywhere you can't see them. Most bites occur when you haphazardly reach somewhere and accidentally squish the spider. And that's when people tend to have the most issues with widow spiders. That being said, while widow spiders definitely have a formidable reputation, they're probably not the most feared spider that can wind up in your house. The infamous brown recluse is probably also one of the most misidentified spiders in North America, if not the world. You see a creepy looking, somewhat tan or brown spider in your house and it's immediately a brown recluse, but is it actually? Brown recluses, while they have different coloration across their range, have a few characteristics in common. They're flat for fitting into really tight out of the way spaces. They have six eyes 
in three groups on the front of their head. And while it varies how dark this patch is from species to species, they have this darkened patch of their cephalothorax that forms a violin shape. And the reason these spiders can be dangerous is they actually possess a pretty gnarly cytotoxin in their venom. Unlike a lot of other spiders which are neurotoxic and use more of a paralytic enzyme to subdue their prey and potentially tell their predators to back off, these guys have an enzyme that actually just breaks down all the tissues and cells that it comes in contact with. In some of the more notorious tropical species, this can be extremely dangerous and fatal. Here in North America, the jury is still out on whether or not a brown recluse is actually a super dangerous spider, but when there's uncertainty, it's always better to err on the side of caution. And knowing where brown recluses are most commonly gonna hang out is gonna help you avoid any unwanted interactions. I'm actually in my attic right now, and we actually have a ton of cardboard boxes here, just with old stuff from when we first moved to North Carolina. Cardboard boxes are one of their favorite places to hide because in their natural environment, they'd actually be hiding in the bark of dead trees. They get their name recluse, from the fact they wanna squeeze and hide away and pretty much only move under cover of darkness. So if you live in recluse country and you have cardboard boxes in your basement or attic, checking them extra carefully before you move them or reach inside them can really help you avoid getting any nasty bites from these freaky little spiders. Finding these spiders in your house can be scary, but at the end of the day, if you've got cellar spiders, they're probably gonna eat them for you. So even if you don't like spiders, I would say one spider you definitely wanna keep in your house are the cellar spiders because they eat all of the dangerous and unwanted ones and definitely earn their keep. But of course, spiders aren't the only weird creatures that live right alongside and sometimes even in our houses. There are some pretty weird insects that live around us as well. If you wanna see some of the weirdest ones, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.